Hey everybody, welcome to this video on real estate audio. Today we're going to be talking about a few different things. Number one, how to enhance your voiceover in a real estate video. We're going to talk about the mixing of the voiceover with the music. And then of course, we're going to talk about the sound design aspect. So that's going to talk about how to capture sounds, where to get sounds, how to place sounds, and how to make your real estate video stand out above others because of sound, okay? I assume you already have great visuals, you're a great filmmaker. Let's dive into this. So we're going to be working in Premiere, and if you don't have Premiere, that's okay. I'm not going to do anything that is specific to Premiere, but I will mention that in the new update of Premiere, you can go into here under Window, click on Essential Sound, and it will pull up this guy, and you can basically highlight your clips and tell it what it is. So you're gonna highlight your V and say, okay, this is dialogue. And then you click that and it will assign it as dialogue. Then you can do automatic automation, which is pretty neat. But we're not gonna talk about that right now. That's another video. Right now we're gonna talk about enhancing your VO. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is look at breathing and little noises that happen in voiceover. So in here, there are some mouth clicks and breathing that sounds unnatural. And you may be thinking, well, isn't breathing natural? Yes, it is, but in a voiceover, you don't really want it. So I'll show you the two examples. So there's a mouth click here that we can see right there. That basically is when you have spit in your mouth and it makes a pop sound. And then this mouth click and breath right here. And this actually made it into the final video. Check this out. Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed. The other reason that we want to trim all this noise up is because once we use our tool called a compressor, then that is going to actually accent all of those little things. So we don't want them in there. There may be a few cases where we'll leave in some breaths, but we'll get to that later. Now we're going to be dealing with something like this. Welcome to Fox Hill, an invitingly comfortable living space with walnut flooring and radiant heat. So I'm gonna leave that breath in. I think it sounds all right. One thing I did notice is the way he said heat, it's like he's almost gonna say something right after. Thousand square feet. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this T. And heat. And we're gonna stick it in here. Square feet of beautifully designed and invitingly comfortable. And we may wanna turn it down a little bit, okay? Just so it's not as present. Thousand square feet of beautifully designed in an okay so that way you can kind of repair it so now that we've done that we're going to do our next step and this is eq now this can be done in any program so don't feel like this is just adobe specific i'm going to be using the parametric equalizer anytime i tackle dialogue i always use the high pass filter so this basically gets rid of all that low end noise that shows up in your recordings this is things like ac hums traffic background noise whatever and then i'll move my way up the spectrum from left to right and i like to first start out by carving things things instead of boosting because most of the time when you carve things out you'll find that you don't need to boost so in this example if you're saying thinking what in the world are you talking about carving and boosting let me show you so we're going to grab this high pass filter i'm going to just change that to 18 and i like to put my dialogue anywhere between 90 and 100 so next we're going to carve and that basically means we grab these little things okay these are called bell curves and we're going to carve out see that we're going to make notches down boosting is when you boost up the volume. So remember, we're going to first start carving. So in this example, the voice is a little bit muffled. If it sounds a little bit muffled, then you can cut out the low end rather than going over here and boosting the high end. So I recommend cutting before you start boosting. All right, so we're gonna go around and we're gonna try and find the EQ area that we need to carve out. Welcome to Fox Hill. Located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah, this spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and invitingly comfortable living space with walnut flooring and radiant heat. The kitchen stuns with its Carrera marble countertops. Listen how that just cleaned it up and made it sound brighter because we took out some of that low end. Welcome to Fox Hill. Located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. Welcome to Fox Hill. Located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. It's a subtle thing, but it adds up. So if you're a little bit confused at what an EQ is and what I'm saying, don't worry. You'll get it with practice, okay? 
I don't have time to get into the nitty gritty right now, but I go over EQ extensively in my course. So check that out if you're finding yourself struggling. So after we get some EQ touch up, we're gonna go to the next tool called a compressor. And again, it doesn't matter what program you're using. All compressors are the same. They all have the basic same parameters, okay? So with VO, I typically like to aim for around three to six dB of gain reduction, which is indicated on this particular compressor right here. To achieve that, we're going to want to set our ratio for VO, I like anywhere between 2 and 4, so let's just try 2.5. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our threshold, which is indicated right here, or we could do it right here. As far as attack and release, we're not going to worry about those for right now. And if you're sitting there thinking, what are the last 200 words he just said? It's okay. Compression is an intimidating tool. And if you don't understand it right now, you can learn it. We don't have time to talk about all the specific things about a compressor in this video, but I do explain compression super, super in depth in my course. For now, feel free to copy down these settings and it will get you in a pretty good spot. So the goal with compression is we're going to try and level out the VO. So instead of being all over the place, like the compressor will help smooth all of that out. So we're going to adjust this threshold until we get our target gain reduction and or it sounds pretty nice and glued together is how people say it. So here we go. Located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. Welcome to Fox Hill. Located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. Welcome to Fox Hill, located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. Okay, so I'm Welcome going a to Fox too far Hill, there. located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. Welcome to Fox Hill. I like that. I like around there. Now you may be thinking, well, what are you listening for? Again, we don't have all the time to go into it right now, but we're basically trying to tame. You see these peaks and these valleys? We're trying to bring up these valleys and lower these peaks so it's a little bit more consistent. This will help it stand out against the music. Now you can easily go overboard on compression and that will sound like this. Welcome to Fox Hill. Located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. So do you notice how it sounds like he's being choked? We don't want to do that. So we just want to adjust until we're hitting around those target levels and it sounds good. Sometimes you don't need to go as heavy and sometimes you need to go a little more heavy. So it totally just depends on the voiceover and the performance. So you may be thinking, well, what happens if my voiceover doesn't sound that good? Let's talk about it really quick. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I want to show it for contrast. So let's say you have a VO that sounds like this. This wonderful home located in the secluded Provo area. There's not much that you can do. The lesson here is get it right at the source. So imagine that you're shooting a real estate video. This video, for example, you're in this kitchen and there's spaghetti smeared all over this table and it's all over the floor and a toddler's handprints are all along this window. And you're saying, ah, it's not worth fixing it right now. We're on a schedule. We have a tight deadline. Let's just get it rid of it and post. No, you would never do that. So the same thing is with VO. If you get a VO that sounds like a spaghetti mess, fix it before you move on. And you're probably thinking, well, I've never heard a VO that sounds that bad. Trust me, I have got so many of these. I get them all the time and people are asking me to clean it up and make it sound professional. And it just never will because it's defying the laws of physics. So all that being said, what can we do to help this guy out? First thing, you grab the EQ. So we're going to go up here. We're going to add in that same parametric EQ. So we're going to do our low cut like I always do. We'll just put it around 90 hertz. We're going to set this to around 18 dB. So the first thing that you notice is it sounds like it's super roomy and distant. And this is often what it will sound like if you try and record with a video mic pro on top of your camera far away, or heaven forbid, you use your internal camera microphone. So take a listen. This wonderful home located in the... So we're going to pull out some of that thickness. Secluded Provo area. This wonderful home located in this the next thing is that it's super bright and harsh so a lot of people are afraid to mess with the high end because they don't want to make something muddy don't be afraid to pull down a little bit of the high end so let's boost the gain on here so we can hear it a little better secluded provo area this wonderful home located in the secluded Pro okay so then we can try something like this we'll narrow this down a little bit provo area this wonderful home. The next thing that we're going to do before our compressor is we're going to do something called a de -esser. Now, most programs will have this. This is basically a compressor for the high frequency. So this will help tame some of that high-end sibilance. Located in the so listen, this is what it's grabbing here. See, so that's outputting sibilance only. 
This wonderful home, located in the secluded Provo area. Now, if you go overboard with the de-esser, it'll sound like they have a list. The next thing that we're going to do is clean up the VO, which I don't have time to go over in this VO because this particular VO would need some massive TLC and surgery, and I don't want to waste two hours of your life. But I do cover noise cleanup extensively in my course. Then, of course, after the noise cleanup, we would just, you know, go in at our compression, same thing. But again, I want to reemphasize the importance of getting this right from the beginning. There's a big contrast between this this wonderful home located in the secluded pro and this neighborhood of Provo, Utah. Welcome to Fox. One sounds professional. One sounds like you used a video mic pro on top of your camera. All right, so the next thing that we're going to tackle is the music. First things first, you wanna figure out what song you're going to use, okay? You wanna make sure that the song is interesting, but it's not distracting. If there's too many things going on in the song, it can take away from the VO and distract the VO. If there is no VO, then obviously you don't need to worry about that. The second thing with music is you're going to wanna figure out the structure of the song. So make a note of how you wanna tell your story and how you want your video to grow, and then look at how the song tells the story. So say for example, you've got a song that is dynamic like this, and then it comes up here, then it kinda of dies down, then picks back up and has an outro, and it's like, okay, well, that's four minutes. I don't really wanna make a four minute real estate video. Analyze the song, listen to it, look at how it grows, and then figure out how you can make it help you tell your story, okay? What do you need to chop to fit your needs? And remember, when you're chopping up songs, this is someone's art. So don't destroy it. You wanna make their art sound beautiful. So try and find appropriate moments to cut, like a downbeat. That's basically when the beat hits, and you can see it on this particular song. There's these percussion hits. So if there's a chord progression that's looping, then you can say, okay, well, I'll repeat it right here, rather than just cutting, right? So for example, and then it starts repeating right there. So we have this much time on a full bar loop. Now, if you say, well, I don't want that much time, I'm just gonna do this, and you know, I like this part, and then I'll you know, scoot this in because I want this part to come a little earlier. Listen to how this feels. Awful. You just ruin the artist's integrity. Find appropriate moments to cut. So after you've cut up your song, then you want to look at the dynamics of the song. So that basically means how quiet your song is going to get and how loud it's going to get. So look at the waveforms and make a judgment call. One thing that I like to do is volume automation. So this helps me have control over when my VO comes in like right here, and make sure the music isn't getting in the way of the speaking. We wanna have a nice balance between speaking and VO because the biggest mistake I see with VO and music is either the music and voice are way too competing or people are putting the music super quiet because they're afraid to make it too loud and drown out the vocal. And both of those approaches make your video seem amateur. So let's start with the automation on this music. So we've got, of course, our VO coming in right here and then the beat on the music, just because we can see on the dynamics, picks up here. So what we'll do is we'll create an automation point and this can be done in any program. So we're gonna just turn this down because you can see that this is a little quiet and then this turns up and we can obviously hear that if we listen to it. So we'll just turn that down. I like to do anywhere between negative three to negative six for starting. So we'll just call it negative four and see how that sounds. Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and invitingly. So maybe it's still a hair too loud. We can maybe try five and let's pull it out before that downbeat comes in right. There. Highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed. See how that's really nice and smooth. So here's before. Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed in and streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and invitingly comfortable living space with walnut. 
hear how the voice isn't competing anymore. It's just really nice and smooth. It just works really well. Now, this song is a really nice bed of music because there's not a lot of high end going on. And so it kind of just wraps itself around the voice. So what if you had another song that wasn't as nice of a bed and didn't wrap itself around the vocal? Well, in this case, you're going to use, you're never gonna guess, EQ. So let's say we have this song that we had earlier. Located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000. Okay, so here how that's competing. So here's what we're going to want to do. We're going to go over here and then we're going to add in our EQ. And one thing that we can do, we don't want to destroy the artist song again, but let's grab this high shelf and bring down some of the high frequencies because a lot of voices, you hear the information at 2K and above. So if we can knock that out on our song a little bit, then that will help us hear that voice on top of a volume automation. Let's try that. Of Provo, Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and invitingly comfortable living space with walnut flooring and radiant. I like that. So notice I'm pulling out 4.5 dB at 1700. That's quite a bit of high end content. Here's a before and after. Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of... So the next step is that we're going to use our volume automation. We're going to bring that down. But the interesting thing here is, is we've carved out some of this high end. And so sometimes we don't need to make as drastic of volume decisions right there. It's neighborhood of Provo, Utah. This spectacular home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and invitingly comfortable living space with walnut floor. So one of my favorite things to do is mess with EQ on the volume curves. Now, traditionally you do something like this. You take the volume curve, you bump it up, you know, yada, yada. You find where the voice isn't talking. It goes up and down like this. Flooring and radiant heat. The kitchen stuns with its Carrera mark. But one of my favorite things to do is kind of a hybrid of that plus EQ. So we're going to do something like this. So we're going to find those same spots. So let's try right here. Let's just copy this down here. So let's call this top track our speaking track. And then this bottom track is our break track. So we're going to put some fades on there. We'll just do it quick. Boom. Boom. Something like this. So obviously this is rough. It's not going to be some perfect thing. This is to give you the idea. Now, here's where the magic happens. So we've got this little clip where there's no VO. So we want the volume to increase a little bit. So what we can do is on that track, the sans voice track, we will not have an EQ. So we've got our EQ on the track that's speaking. We'll get our vocal music track to sound where we like it. An invitingly comfortable living space with walnut floor. And it's kind of competing with the voice down here as well. Comfortable living space with walnut flooring and radiant heat comfortable living space with walnut flooring all right so that sounds pretty good and we can turn down the volume just a little bit with walnut flooring and radiant perfect i like that a lot so now this other track that we faded that doesn't have eq and that doesn't have the volume adjustment now watch how it opens up in that gap space with walnut flooring and radiant heat the kitchen stuns with its Carrera mark. So again, I did it quick so we could finesse this fade a little bit better. But that's the idea. And it's it's such an amazing tool to give that EQ some in and out and automate your music tracks, not only by volume, but also by using EQ so it can fade with it rather than just being a straight up volume up and down. Plus, the other thing I like about doing it this way is I can see where that is. And so if there's an issue, then I can master pull down that whole track or I can adjust it as a whole and say, well, you know, but maybe I don't like that going up as much there, whatever the case. So the next part that we're going to tackle is sound design. So there are a ton of ways to go about doing sound design for something like this. One thing that I really like to do with these types of videos is accent things in a kind of abstract way. So obviously the type of video that you're doing will come into play here, but I want you to think outside of the box. So let's go to this kid's room right here. What if we tried, and again, we're just thinking out of the box here, some kids laughing and playing around, kind of an echo to to give the parents that are shopping for this house something to be like, oh, because remember with real estate videos, you're trying to sell a house. And the best way to do that is with emotion. So you want these people to become emotionally attached to the house. And if you can get your real estate agent to sell more houses because your videos are more engaging and more emotional, you're going to get a lot more work. And a great way to sell people emotionally is with sound. So you can paint pictures in their head of potential something. Oh, the grandkids would love this room. So you could put in some 
sound of some kids playing. Or even on this pool scene, you could have a pool party sound going on, kind of in the distance. You can add some reverb. You can mess with EQ and make it sound like a distant memory or a future memory. And again, with VO, or depending on the type of house or video, this won't always work. But the idea here is to give it a shot. Okay, so as a quick example, we've got this pool scene here. And again, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time, but this is for demonstration purposes. You could kind of have this pool fading in. Your own deluxe in-ground pool. This and especially right there where he says in-ground pool, and then there's kind of a pause. So you can give way for that. Deluxe in-ground pool. This and then you can just fade it out here. It'll be right here. We'll just do a cut, blah, blah. Put in a fade here, drag that out. And this way you can just sell it. And I'm not saying do this every single time, but if you make it really subtle and nice, then you can make it a memories type thing and an emotional thing. Box in ground pool. This spectacular home. And you can also add something like reverb, which any program you're going to have will have that. Reverb is basically a space type of a thing. So that will make it sound like this. More washy. So we could just pick one of these presets like Endless Tunnel or something. This spectacular home with we can even add it on this other track because we've got two tracks going. We'll do the same preset, Endless Tunnel. And again, I'm just winging this here. It can be really anything. This spectacular home with its little bit too much creeping on the horror end with that screaming, but you get the idea. <laughs> give it a shot think outside of the box so the other thing that is key with sound design is whoosh sound design so those are transition sounds you know the woo woo so those can add a lot of dramatic effects to things that you want to accent but it can also get super annoying if you overuse them and use them improperly so included if you sign up with my course there's 20 free whoosh sound effects for you to use so let's use some of those sound effects in here and just see how we would place those so one of the first ones we wanted on this whip in right we want it to just feel super big and dramatic going into that house neighborhood of provo utah this spectacular mix that in provo utah this spectacular you may be thinking well it's a little bit distracting and it is so here's something that we can do you're never going to guess what tool i'm going to use you guessed it the parametric eq so there's a little bit too much high end and it's kind of distracting so let's just grab that high shelf and pull that down neighborhood of provo utah Maybe even a little bit more. Turn down the volume a little bit. Of Provo, Utah. See Home how much nicer that feels? Here's without that EQ. Neighborhood of Provo, Utah. This spectacular. Here's with. Neighborhood of Provo, Utah. This spec One of the biggest things that I see people do is just stick in sounds. So they don't ever use EQ. They don't ever use effects. They're not tweaking it to fit their edit. And this is a huge missed opportunity. Try playing with reverb. Try playing with EQ. And again, these things are available in any program. So imagine if we want to just toss on an EQ to make this thing even more dramatic. Okay, so we'll go with that same empty living room preset. Out of Provo, Utah. This spectacular home. That gives it a little bit of a tail, a little bit more dramatic. We can even boost it up a little. Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. This then, so you don't get plain and boring, is you can find other areas where it would make sense to kind of whip into something. If you want a dramatic showing of when it does an overhead in the house, like here. Let's grab another one of those. Location. Help it accent the music. Maybe this isn't the right whoosh location is it's a little bit too dramatic and airy and horror-esque play around with different whooshes try and find one that fits location is everything Location is everything. So this one doesn't feel too bad, but again, feel free to play with effects. People just don't do this often enough and it's a huge missed opportunity. So we can shape and sculpt the sound with our EQ. If we wanted to have less high end and even more low end, we could do something like this. Location is you can dramatically change the tone of the thing just by using an EQ. Location is well, feel free to mess around. So the last part I want to cover with sound design are the obvious spots. So we've got the dramatic kid type sound effects. We've got the transition sounds. And then there's the ones like the birds at the beginning at an outside shot. Welcome to Fox Hill located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of- So these had a ton of emotion and potential. You want to put the viewer at the house physically as much as you can. So one of the best ways to get different types of sounds is capture them while you're at location. And you can do this with pretty much anything you have on hand. You don't need a ton of fancy audio gear to get this. If you have something like a Zoom H6 or H4N or anything with an onboard mic, that will work just great. 
just get about 30 to 60 seconds and use it. Make sure you mix up locations. So say you're filming this spot, this part is gonna sound a little bit different than the beginning. And the more and more you do this, the more and more you go around and record these random sounds, you will start to build up your own library. And that way, sounds are unique to you and your productions. You've got them at your disposal without paying for them or worrying about copyright, and you'll have them forever. Because building a sound library will be an enormously wise investment as you do more and more videos. You'll find more uses for the same sounds and ways to bend and shift them so you can always make something new and unique. So. Even if you don't want to do it on day of shoot because you're stressed out with the real estate shoot or whatever, maybe set aside a day and say, okay, well, today I'm going to go get sounds from all these different types of areas and then just pop them in and then just mess with the volume, which leads me to the last point of all of this, and that is mixing all of it together. So you're never going to guess how we do this, but it's volume and EQ. I know, insane, right? What we'll do is we'll just listen through and adjust, and I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but we could just do this beginning section. We wanna just make sure that things are nice and balanced. And the biggest thing that I need to emphasize is, and I hope this goes without saying, please use good speakers or headphones, okay? Obviously, I really hope that's obvious because to a lot of people it's not. The other thing is, and this is where a lot of people make a mistake, they listen way, way too loud, whether that is on speakers or headphones. Listen at a relatively low, quiet volume. I have my volume really quiet almost all the time. And then obviously I turn it up to double check some things, but if you mix quietly, you'll be able to balance everything a lot better than if you mix really loud. If you mix at quieter volumes, I promise you, your videos will turn out a lot better. So let's just take this beginning part and we'll kind of just adjust. Welcome to Fox Hill, located in the highly sought after. Okay, so birds are way too loud. Let's bring that down. Located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood. Okay, and maybe we don't like that bird sound, so that's fine. We can pull another one. Welcome to Fox Hill located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo. That one's a little more inviting. Okay, and maybe you want the music to start a little bit earlier. With this particular song, it fades in. So let's maybe bump up that fade here. Okay, do this kind of a thing. Welcome to Fox Hill, located in the highly sought after Tree Streets neighborhood of Provo, Utah. All right, so let's move on to the next part. So in here, again, you don't have to do sound design. Maybe you could have like party sounds if you want to go abstract. Tread lightly with that. Their home has over six. Now I'm hearing, well, the voiceover is maybe not poking out enough. So we're going to go back to our voiceover. We're going to go back to the EQ. Thousand square feet of beautifully designed. I feel like it could poke out a little bit more in the upper areas. So let's take care of that. Their home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and inviting. Their home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and inviting. Their home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and inviting their home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and inviting their home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and inviting we can also adjust the volume of our music a little bit so we'll take it down to maybe negative two beautifully designed and inviting their home has over six i like it see so then you just rinse and repeat and i like to relate this to a shop broom so you know when you're sweeping and there's dirt and so you go pretend that the cursor is a broom so you go so if you just swept forward then you're gonna miss a lot of dirt chunks i view it the same as mixing i'll just do this i'll sweep it so i'll just kind of cycle slowly go through slowly go through slowly go through and that way you can make sure that things are consistent cohesive and it just sounds really nice. So the last thing that we're going to do, once we've finished our whole mix, done the whole sweeping shindig, is we're going to go to our master fader. That's basically the last thing on your chain. And we're going to add something called a limiter. A limiter is a compressor on steroids. It's going to help you get your video to a good loudness without clipping. We're going to put on a loudness meter. And this guy is free, okay? This is called the Yulion loudness meter. I recommend this to everybody that is trying to do this. So we're going to just use our limiter and we're going to do this input boost here to try and get our loudness at a good spot. Their home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and inviting. Their home has over 6,000 square feet of beautifully designed and inviting. Their home has over 6,000. Yeah, looks good to me. I usually like to aim around there. 
So I don't have time to go into everything about loudness and all that. I talk about it a bunch in my course, but once your volume is figured out, like it is right now, then we're ready to go. You export your video and then you book more gigs, you book more clients, you make better videos and you improve your life. This video is brought to you by Improve Your Life LLC. The views and opinions expressed in this video are those of the stock models pictured and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of that audio guy. Assumptions made in the analysis are not reflective of any position of any entity or remember to think outside the box, get creative and have fun. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Hey, thanks for joining me. If you learned a lot from this video, come check out my free one hour training where I will teach you the top six mistakes that filmmakers are constantly making with their audio. Plus, I've got a full extensive course where I teach you everything you need to know to immediately improve the quality of your videos by finally understanding sound and how to use it to enhance your productions. I cover all the things that we didn't have time to go over in this video, like EQ, compression, loudness, limiting, sound design, etc., etc., etc. Let me know if you have any other questions, brendan at audioguy.co, and I cannot wait to see you on the other side. See you guys.